I'm going to do something pretty wild in this video. I'm going to share the hardest lessons of my life that have taught me the valuable lesson on how to teach and actually make impact. So my promise to you today is I will teach you my strategies, what I've learned over a decade of teaching and learning and the hard lessons I've learned so you can make real impact if you choose to follow. I want to be really clear. These life lessons I share with you today relate to online coaching, communication, relationship, content creation, health and nutrition, weight loss, technology, well-being and personal development or basically any other topic that can actually be learned. And I know these lessons and these strategies work because I've learned them the hard way and I've been teaching them to hundreds of different people from course creators, content creators, coaches, teachers, musicians, musicians, designers, electricians, university students, you name it, I've been teaching them. So I know these work from experience. Just remember, a man with experience is never at the mercy of a man with just an opinion. So let's begin. Let's climb that mountain. But first things first, for those of you who don't know me, let's address that elephant in the room. This is me. Here I am, 29 years old, addicted to gaming, addicted to fast food, drinking nightly, broke, living paycheck to paycheck. I was $76,000 in debt. I was overweight. I was unhappy un and I was unmotivated motivated. At 94 kilos, I was just hating on life. I was overwhelmed and stressed constantly, feeling helpless to change my entire situation because I'd felt like I was already working so hard already, seeking any form of comfort to justify that lack of time. And I did this by avoiding anything that I didn't think was certain. The outcome was certain. No, I'm not doing it. So who am I now? Well, can't tell you that just yet. So you just have to wait around and see. But now you know a little bit about where I've come from. I'm going to go share with you where I am now and how I've gotten there. But first thing, this presentation and this training is for two people. First, the people that need to help themselves. If you're struggling, if you're in a position right now that you just need some sort of win, some sort of information or strategy, or just some sort of story that relates to what you are experiencing right now, stick around, watch the video. You might find some insight with the lessons I've learned the hard way. And hopefully you can get the help and you can help yourself the way I managed to help myself. And for the second, those who can help others. If that's you, awesome. I'm going to show you how I'm going to show you how it's in your self-interest to help everyone. And if you decide to join me, we can accomplish both our missions together. Before we jump into anything like that, I want to tell you a massive story of achievement. Absolutely huge. I was 10 at the time. I was entered a fishing competition and I'd been fishing for two days out on this beach down in Eden, New South Wales in Australia. And I was trying my hardest. I was trying every strategy, every technique, everything that I learned from my dad about fishing. And you know what? I actually actually caught a massive flathead. It was huge. I actually won that competition. So you could imagine how excited I was that all of that knowledge and all of that training had paid off. I'd won. I've got this massive fish. So the presentation evening came up and I was like, yes, awesome. I'm going to get my prize for coming first. So I'm sitting there eager, waiting. The first person gets up. Wow. They got a whole tackle box full of gear. That's amazing. I was like, yeah, geez, that's cool. The next person got up. They got a full spear gun and snorkel kit. Wow wow, what am I going to get? Because I've caught the biggest fish here today. And then it was my turn. I got up, I walked up, I shook the guy's hand, got a photo, and then I was given my prize. My prize was about this big and it was a $10 fishing lure. And I was like, what? What's going on? I won. Like, why am I getting the smallest prize out of the whole lot? And remember, I'm 10 and I'm just absolutely mind blown that I've won this competition but I've gotten the smallest prize. And the lesson for that didn't come until years later when I started learning about teaching, education, coaching, business, that if you're going to go fishing, if you're going to go try that thing, make sure you're not entered in a participation awards only competition. So clearly you're here for a reason. You're looking for results. You're looking for it in your teaching, in your life, in your coaching business, whatever it might be. So stick around. I'm going to share how to teach and how to make that real impact with yourself in your life and well as the life of the people that we serve. Because remember, I learned at the end of the day, no one's going to save you. No one's going to give you that massive prize that you think you deserve. The only person that can change and get that outcome and get that result is you. You're it. So you have to learn this stuff. Now we've got that out of the way, who would like to start or create more impact in teaching, coaching, or creating content more than you currently are? Yeah? 
Great. <laughs> Otherwise, this would be a very short presentation. So rather than talk about the ways we can create the impact, I want to take the reverse approach. How could you guarantee to shrink or never make impact on the people that you want to serve to begin with? The answer, never change what you're currently doing. And if you don't change your approach first, and then you don't tell anyone about the stuff that you are delivering or you're teaching or you're coaching on, we can pretty much guarantee that you're gonna make no impact anyway. So if we laugh about it, but some of you are doing this right now. So let's assume that you've got something of amazing value already, you're ready to teach. If more people find out about it, do you make more impact? Yes? Well, here's what I'm gonna do for you today. One, I'm gonna share my breakthrough experiences I had when learning to master my own emotions, my own physical well-being, and well as how to teach, which has built the confidence, it's given me time back, and it's given me the ability to make real impact on hundreds of people. Now, I'm gonna give you those lessons without the scars. Number two, I'm gonna give you guys a bunch of frameworks to make more impact in your life and the life of those who we serve. And number three, I'm gonna invite you to join me on my mission to create real impact through education. So you might still be thinking, why should I listen of all? That's me. <laughs> well, here's some transformations from some of my clients that I've worked with. Scott, when I first met Scott, he was really nervous, a shy, timid, and nervous kind of bloke. He was bored out of his brains at his regular electrician job, basically doing all the repetitive work, nonstop. He had no sense of contribution, no sense of impact on helping. And he wanted to spend way more time with his family and friends. Now Scott's got a massive family, so I could see why he would wanna do that. And he wanted to feel some sort of growth, some sort of joy in what he's doing day to day. And he actually found a little bit of that when he started helping the apprentices during the time at, as an electrician. But when he began to start to coach people and began to start teaching people, he had no idea on how to create engaging, impactful courses or teaching styles when he first started. But he had this real drive and need contribute further than what he was already doing. So after and while I was mentoring and coaching him, he had a massive sense of connection and contribution with others while he was teaching. He found that sense of significance and impact that he was having with other people. He gained the certainty to actually spend more time with his family and friends. He gained that variety that he needed to break up the day-to-day -day monotony. And he built the skills to deliver highly impactful, engaging courses. He's now got so many courses that are overflowing with demand for his services and his skills because he's lit up his passion. He's a new person. He's transformed to be that energetic, passionate educator that he is today. And you'll hear a bit more from Scott a bit later. Now, Courtney, she was sick to death of a hospitality job. She was feeling lost in life. That She was actually just wasting time, wasting impact and wasting her life, just doing menial tasks. Not to say they are for not for everyone, but for her, she just thought that. She felt that and she really wanted to contribute. Can you see the trend? Can you see that she wanted to contribute and make impact? She wanted to help people, but she was super nervous starting as well. She was just trying to figure out how can I get success without feeling like a failure when I step in front of that group, when I'm going to present, how do I make sure that I've got no, how do I make sure I've got no fear of humiliation or the fear of failure or the fear that you're gonna lose any sort of authority or genuine actual rapport with your people that you're teaching. And this came through in self-doubt, doubting herself in what she did and how she did it. After working with her and building some systems, building the strategies and coaching her through, she turned into and she transformed into this confident educator who's creating sustainable, engaging, impactful courses for her students. She's surrounded by incredible people that she loves working with every single day. She has the courage and the confidence to share her skills and her passions because she had so many, she just needed to get that permission in herself to be able to share that. And she had the time to now focus on her fitness, on her powerlifting competitions. She's absolute beast who's just so driven and so dedicated now. Now she's gotten some clarity. Now she's got some direction, some support and some skills to back her. Just a couple of other client results. Now I've been teaching for nearly on 10 years or over 10 years of studying it. This is just a snapshot. So I won't stay here too long. But do you sort of see we can start seeing what are we talking about? We're talking about teaching impact 
and the impact that you have in your life and others. Yeah, cool. Well, that's great. Let's move on. So one of my key questions when I ever started teaching, what is the single best way I can create results for my students? So today I'm going to share the three key lessons that I've learned to make massive impact. So lesson one, we're going to the secret how to teach. Lesson two, we're looking at secret to lifelong learning and lesson three, the secret to being seen. Lesson number one, the secret to how to teach. This is a three simple step framework that I've developed over a decade of learning, teaching and training other people on how to teach, create sustainable, engaging courses to get amazing results for their students. Here's how I learned it. I didn't always want to become a teacher. I left home when I was 18. I didn't always want to become a teacher. I left home when I was 18 to go and study economics and commerce at university. I wanted to be an international businessman. I wanted to be like my older brother. In my year 12 graduation book, it even says next to my little photo, dream outcome, international businessman. But after a year of that course, I was bored out of my brains. I was struggling to really engage because I just wasn't finding any meaning for me. And then one day I was on the phone with my parents and we were talking about what I used to love to do. And that was building, designing and building anything to do with furniture or mixed materials or whatever it may be. And they said, hey, why don't you just become a timber teacher, a design and tech teacher. I was like, hmm, that's a decent idea. So I shifted course, I changed direction. And to begin with, I thought, yeah, this is great. Learning how to teach design and technology, industrial technology, timber, anything to do with practical building or course creation. I was like, oh, that sounds cool. I'll give that a go. I wanted to feel like I was making some sort of progress or impact. However, Soon after I started, I had not managed my time. I had not built good routines because I was used to uni before where I was not engaged. So I was working all night or I was gaming all day. And when I was working, I was doing the graveyard shift. So from like 10 o'clock at night to four in the morning, I'd sleep all day, I'd get up, play Xbox, and then I'd do it all over again. And after nearly three years of doing that, failing my uni degree, letting debt just start piling up, I saw a photo on Facebook and it was one of my old mates from high school and they just graduated. Instead of feeling like really ecstatic and excited for them, I instantly felt like, wow, I've just wasted three years of my life. I'm so far behind. I'm an absolute failure. I will never be successful. So after a period of pretty much just self-loathing, a few weeks later, my little brother was like, hey, look, I've just been offered a, a course down at Wagga. I want to start learning how to make wine. And I was like, that's cool. And he's like, why don't you come with me? Why don't we both move to Wagga and you can start your teaching degree, get a fresh start and get that done and I'll go down there and learn how to make wine. I was like, that sounds brilliant. I had a bit of a rubber arm. There was no need to try to convince me. I was keen to start again. I was keen to catch up on the time. And as we made the transition, as I was packing up, getting ready to move, he <laughs> came into the, the kitchen one day and he said, hey mate, uh, I'm not gonna go to Wagga. I was like, what? What do you mean you're not going to Wagga? And he said, I've just been offered a new course doing the same thing, but down in Melbourne. I'm going there instead. And I was like, oh, awesome for you, mate. Like Melbourne's sick. But geez, I was devastated. He's my best mate. And I was so keen to move to Wagga with him because I also, I was so nervous. I don't know anyone in that town. I don't know anything about it. And you know, I was feeling like a failure. I felt like I needed some support, but nevertheless, I'm committed. I made the decision and I moved out there. I needed a catch up time. I needed to feel like I was actually getting my life back, that I was actually good enough. So I made a plan. I'm going to work my ass off in this degree so I can catch up time and become a head teacher within five years of starting my career. And just to give you context, most people become head teachers after 10 years plus. So I was really driven. I wanna do this because I wanna feel like I have enough, feel like I can contribute and feel successful that I can actually, yes, I'm not just in dead shit, just cruising through life. So just after three short years, I graduated as a targeted graduate. I was so excited. I was like, yes, I'm so ready to go and teach. So I moved out to Gunnedah, which is a really remote country town in West New South Wales. And I was like, yep, awesome. First school, let's, let's get into it. So excited. I just spent years trying to catch up, make that time up, get the skills, get the knowledge. And now I'm ready to go and do what I've been trained to do. And when I got there, I remember going into my first class 
and the kids went absolutely ballistic. I had them swearing at me, abusing me, literally running amok. And I was like, what is going on? And when I asked for some help, when I asked for some resources and some support, I just got laughed at or I got ignored. And it was gut-wrenching. It nearly made me quit because I just thought, have I just spent the last six years of my life for this? I was struggling emotionally. I was struggling mentally. So I called up one of my mentors and I asked for some advice. Something he said has stuck with me my entire career. And he told me, remember, effort equals results. If you really want to make impact, you need to change what you're doing. So I was like, wow, he's right. I need to change my approach. I need to change exactly what I'm doing to connect with these people, to connect, to make impact in what I actually am here to do. So after that, I went and I moved to Western Sydney and I spent eight years of full-time dedication to getting results for my students, for the teams I was leading, for the entire network of teachers that I was training. I got clear on my vision, I articulated it to my team, designed and created and collaboratively impacted thousands of students across Australia. So we could just figure out what is the most effective, sustainable and explicit kind of teaching that we can do. I invested in that time frame $60,000 of my own income, my own money into courses, masterminds, coach in all sorts of things, personal and professional development. And I completed on top of the insane hours I was doing at school and after school was 200 hours of accredited training dedicating to figure out how do I do this and do this well. So how have I used that knowledge? How have I used that skill? I started coaching and training people. I became a university lecturer just a couple of years ago where I've designed and led multiple courses that build the skills and the knowledge of my students so they can go and impact and not have that scar of experience so they get the best foot forward. They know how to be sustainable, they know how to make explicit, and they know how to make it engaging. So when they walk in to their first class or their first lecture online or wherever they're presenting, because they're in various different fields, they're, some of them are online coaching and teaching, some of them are face-to-face. -face. So whatever model, doesn't matter they can apply the same method. If you're thinking, I'm struggling with a bit of clarity here, I feel like I've tried everything, I'm just wasting time, I encourage you to watch the rest of this training because I'm going to go through those three secrets, those three lessons that I've learned the hard way and I'm gonna share them with you now. So where can you use them today? So first thing, now we got three steps for success here. Begin with the end in mind. As Tony Robbins says, clarity is power. So identify who are you serving and why and what result are you getting? If you don't know, I've got a simple framework that I've developed so you can identify what are you qualified to go and teach and coach in. So it's called the STEM framework. It's super simple. Skills, time, experience, and materials or money. What skills you got? What time have you got to Im implement into it? What experience do you have getting that result or solving that problem? And how much resources or money do you have to actually contribute? And I know this works because as a design and technology teacher, I've taught and guided multiple students, multiple cohorts of university students, as well as high school students through this framework to identify and validate amazing projects. So step two, course hacking. It might sound simple, it really is. Success leaves clues. I learned this really early in my career. So learn to ethically hack somebody's progress who's already ahead of you. So this can be applied to anything personal, if it's professional, personal, health, wealth, anyone who's ahead of you, you can model or you can hack their progress. Take off 10 years of your experience. One method I do this is just to just check and analyze, is that the method that I wanna use? And that's the pine analysis. And it's positive, interesting, negative evaluation. You put it through that framework and you can determine, is that the right vehicle for you? And I know that works because I've trained, as I said, hundreds of people on how to apply that framework and they've got amazing results for their students. They've become aligned in what they're doing and why they're doing it. And then the third step for success is systematize the process. Now, it's absolutely mind blowing these days that if you're a first year teacher or you're getting into coaching, that there's really not that much support that is there. You're not gonna, here's your kit, go and deliver it. So you need to figure out how do you systematize the process really quickly. So there's a super simple framework for that. You need to make it templated and repeatable. And that can be hosted on an online learning system such as Google Classroom or School or something like that. 
It needs to be multimodal, meaning it needs to have text, image, and video, or interaction. If it's just static, it can be really dry and not engaging, and it'll miss majority of your learners. And then last is sequential learning. It's simple as step by step, you need to guide them from point A to point B and how you're gonna do that, you go step by step. Because if you miss a step, it's really hard to get somebody caught up. And I know this method worked because back in 2020, when lockdown hit us and our team and our network, I'd been training the entire network on how to build sustainable online engagement and learning systems so when we were given 24 hours notice to switch our entire model across the state to online learning, boom, we we're ready to go. We we're already there. We just needed to sign people into Zoom and then we we're sorted. That's how I've earned it and learned it. That's how I've used it. That's how you can use it today. So let's get into lesson number three to create massive impact. So the secret of lifelong learning, how to master your mindset and become unstoppable at what you learn, do and teach to ultimately have bigger impact for your students and feel fulfilled in what you do. So here's how I learned it. You might be thinking, but I'm not a teacher. I'm not a coach. I'm not good enough. I don't know what I would be doing. I don't know how I would be teaching these people. But ultimately, you're still wanting real impact to teach them something awesome that you've already learned and you feel accomplished that you're contributing to improving the lives of others. If you don't have these desires, you wouldn't be watching this focused on doing the hard things like making content seeking the answers of self-mastery, self-mastery in your personal and professional life. So like you, I had this primary concern for so many different things. I'm not good enough, I can't do it. As far back as I can remember, I remember from primary school all the way back then, I hated running, hated it. If anyone asked me to run, I'd be the kid in the back of the hall or back of the oval, literally trying to hide because I was that fat kid who just said, no, I'm not a runner, I can't do this. I consistently told myself, I hate running. I hate it. I'm not fit enough. I can't do it. I'm not a runner. But I didn't just have that one limiting belief. This compounded into so many other aspects of my life and so many other insecurities that I told myself things like, I hate reading. I will never be able to save or have wealth because I don't know how to invest. So I had those limiting beliefs all the way up. And then I graduated uni and next minute, I was probably four years into my career. I was 94 kilos. I was addicted to gaming. Literally every day after work, I would come home, I would crack a beer, I would make a coffee with some Baileys in it and I would play Xbox for six hours plus. And on the weekends, I would get up and I would probably game from seven o'clock to 11 o'clock that night. And I'd do that Saturday and Sunday. Order whatever junk food I wanted and I would just, sought any sort of comfort to escape my reality. You can probably tell I wasn't an aligned person from the, the story that you heard right before where I dedicated decade of my life to learning everything, teaching and learning. And now this guy is at home playing Xbox all night, binge eating. Well, you can probably see there's some pretty big conflict, internal conflict going on there. So I started pretty much neglecting every aspect of my life because I was trying to escape the hard things. I was trying to seek certainty, seek comfort in what I could control when I was feeling out of control. So 2020 came and I got separated from my wife at the time. We got divorced a bit later, but that was absolutely devastating for me. It was the biggest wake up call I could have ever asked for because I thought marriage was for life. I thought I was guaranteed, yep, look, locked in, this is it. Doesn't matter anything else. This is my internal belief that is locked in. That is certain for life. But one day it was obliterated. That mental limiting belief of like, yep, that's, that's locked in, I'm certain, obliterated, blown to pieces. And at that moment I woke up, I had the choice, let myself slip into a deep dark depression or I can do something about this. I can change, I can do something that I can control. Because what if I didn't? What would one month look like? What would six months look like? What would six years look like? Would I be 120 kilos, single, depressed, and just hating life? Well, I wasn't gonna let myself get because I pretty much was there already. So I started doing everything in my willpower to change. I first started walking. I literally, instead of going home and sitting on the couch and turning the Xbox on, I would get home and I would put my walking shoes on and I'd go outside, even if it was for one minute, I would go for a walk. If it was raining, I'd go for a walk. And then next minute I was walking for five minutes. Then I was going for 20 minutes and then I was going for an hour. 
and compounding and compounding and compounding, momentum built, success built. I started seeing results. I started reducing and losing weight. And I was like, wow, I'm actually making some sort of impact in my own life by doing this small little thing by walking. So that one little change turned into magnitude of everything else. It was change was not, I should, I should change, I should go for a walk. I should start reading because I need to figure out how do I solve this problem. It became a must. Change became my must. I must go and walk. I must start eating healthy. I must read this because I need to know why am I in this world of pain right now. And one day my little brother called me up and he said, hey, have you ever heard of Tony Robbins? I was like, no, who's that? And then he said, just go check out his podcast. I reckon you'll like it. So I started listening and it was one of the best decisions that I've made in my entire life. I just remember I put on my runners, I walked down the back of my house and then I was into the bush. I lived right behind the National Park in the Blue Mountains. So I was going down and up these big steep hills surrounded by Australian bush and all the birds chirping. It was really nice, really just calming for your mind. And I remember listening to him as I was walking up this really steep hill. And remember, I'm super unfit at this point. I was feeling like literal death, like my heart rate was just pounding out of my chest. And during that walk, I started listening to Tony's podcast. And one of the things he said has stuck with me ever since that day. And he said, life is happening for me and not to me. And I was like, wow, that's really insightful. But then I really thought about it and he was right. Whatever you're dealing with right now is the thing that you need to deal with to become the person that you need to become or you are aspiring to become. So how did I use that knowledge? After that moment, I committed myself to never stop learning, never stop growing, and to consistently see every challenge as the next thing I'm going to learn how to solve, build my skills, and prove to myself that I can do it. I can master whatever is put in front of me. Whatever obstacle is in my way, I will go through that obstacle. And after that moment, and only just four months later, I'd lost 24 kilos. I'd paid off all of my debt. Remember, that was $76,000 of debt. I started a master's of education while working full time. I saved and invested six figures of, of income. I started running and then I ran my first marathon. And remember, I hated running. I was literally that fat kid who would just refuse to do it. And now I'm signing up for a marathon. What? And then just last year, I actually did my first ultra marathon, which is just a whole nother ball game. It's like, wow, <laughs> it's absolutely crazy. So I went from this person that hated reading, who hated running, who was living paycheck to paycheck, addicted to gaming, who was addicted to fast food and had that identity of I'm a gamer, I'm fat, I can't do that, it's not me, to the person that you're seeing at the moment who is transformed into a high achieving, high value, athlete, educator and leader. Because you remember, if you haven't done it before, it doesn't mean you can't do it. Recently, I was reading a book, Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. If you haven't read it, it's a must read. But in there, he was saying, if another man has done it and has achieved it, do not consider it impossible if another man has done it, because why can't you too? So if you're still thinking, I'm not a teacher, I challenge you to shift this mindset. I have valuable knowledge to contribute to others. If you're thinking, I don't know how to teach, I think I can learn how to teach by studying, practicing, and getting feedback. I don't know how to coach people from A to B. Well, think I can help get the results that they want to achieve by listening, asking, and actually being there to support them through that journey. I don't know how to build those connections. I can't connect. I want you to think I can connect with people by being authentic, curious, and offering support when they ask. If you're having the thought, I'm not enough, like I was, I'm not enough, I can't do that. Think and feel, I'm worthy of fulfillment, respect and happiness. And if you've just got that general fear of humiliation, and it's a big one because you're humiliated in what you've lost or what you are right now, I'm not afraid of making mistakes because they are an opportunity to learn and to grow. Remember, and this is what I've learned, your identity is your controlling force in life. Whatever you think you are, you will become. The only way to get lasting change is to change that identity. So I went from a, I hate running, I'm not a runner, to now I'm an endurance athlete. I can't teach, I'm not a teacher, to now I'm a high achieving teacher. 
that identity shift is how you create change. So here's how you can use it today. Steps for success, master that mindset. Remember, as Tony says, life is happening for me and not to me. So answer these two questions. How do you cope with failure? And how do you respond to feedback? Have a think. If you thought it'll be hard to improve based on that failure, but I'll give it a crack, you have a growth mindset. Brilliant, move to the next step. If you thought I can't change, then you must change. Remember your mindset is fixed at this moment, but it can turn to growth, but you need to make it. You need to want it and you're the only one that can do that. I learned that identifying and accepting the challenge is the first part of growth. Step two, this is the success cycle. Remember when I was talking about walking for five minutes a day? Well, this is how you can do it. It's belief, potential, action, and result. Belief you can do something, potential that you actually can go and do that thing, action that you actually go on and do it, and then results because now it's reinforced. So you follow that cycle, build that momentum up. And then the last thing is we need to level up that ambition. Stay curious and level it up, the pillars of progress. So if you think you can't, then learn how. If you know you can't, then change what you're doing. If you know you can do it, teach others how to. The last lesson is the lesson and the secret to being seen. So here's how I learned it. So as you know, when I was going through my divorce, every day I'd put on my shoes and I'd go for a walk down the bush. Most days I'd either call my younger brother or I'd call my dad. And every day I walked down the bush and called dad, we would talk for maybe half an hour to an hour, and he was just there for me. He was providing support, he was providing an ear to listen. I never felt like he was looking to get something out of this. He was just there to help me through that painful moment. And at that time, I was working probably 60 hour weeks. And every day I was going to work with a knot in my stomach. It was like an ulcer burning through my gut because I didn't want to tell my team what I was going through, that I'd failed in my relationship, my marriage had failed because I was ashamed of who I was. I didn't want them to know I was hurting because I was their leader. I didn't want to bring that into their world and burden them with it. Till one day, one of my team came up to me and said, Vaughn, are you okay? You've been walking around like an injured bear and you're about to rip someone's head off. <laughs> I thought, yeah. He was genuinely concerned for me and so was the rest of the team. But he had the courage to ask, are you okay? As I held back the tears, I let him know, I told him what I was going through. And at that moment, the knot in my stomach disappeared. I felt lighter, I felt happier and I felt supported. He did not have to do anything, but he just wanted to understand where I was, was the problem I was dealing with, because I didn't need to do it alone. And at that moment, I was listening to so many audiobooks and so many podcasts and so many things, and I was reading every day, and I'd learned about vulnerability. is not to be seen as a weakness, but as a strength, because fear can immobilize us from taking any action. Fear of humiliation, fear of rejection, the fear of the unknown, the fear of failure, this fear truly stops us from connecting with people. Like Brene Brown said in her book, Dare to Lead, vulnerability takes enormous courage and recognizing that becomes empowering. So I learned to let go of the worry about what are people gonna think? What expectation should I be holding for myself with these people? So I thought just recently, I'd been making videos for a long time. You can even go back on my YouTube channel and see there was a couple of videos back from like seven years ago. And you'll notice, you never see my face, you never see me, hear me talking, you just hear some music and some captions and you see some captions. That's because I had this fear, what will people think? I don't sound good on camera. I don't look good on camera. And then one day a mentor told me, I don't care about your story Vaughn or about why you can't do something. It's not gonna get you, it's not gonna get you anywhere. And if you think you can't do it, you must go and do it. They said, Vaughn, your job is to work harder on yourself than anything else in your life. And I was like, wow, you need to become more valuable to others. And if you can do more for others than anyone else, you will make massive impact in whatever way you want because you won't need to be looking for them. They will come to you to seek your guidance, to seek your help and to seek the lessons that you've learned and so they can fast track their progress without having to deal with the scars. 
because they can truly grow to trust you if they can see, hear, and actually understand where you've come from, from A to B in your journey. So here's how I've used it today. So my entire focus has to been to get results for my students. And once I truly learned what it meant to work harder on myself than anything else, I truly was able to do that. Because just a few years ago, I was so driven to get the results and I was failing to listen. I was failing to hear and I was failing to actually connect with the students, colleagues, clients that I actually was serving. That is when I changed. I read more than 50 books on personal development from health, wealth, finance, all the different areas in all things of communication and relationship building. And as you know, I've gone to multiple conferences, masterminds, courses, I've done heaps. And the most transformational experience that I've had was four years ago when I went to Tony Robbins' first Unleash the Power Within conference. And he said, if you're going into a relationship, whether that's business or whether that's personal or romantic, and you go to give and not get, life will be truly full of abundance. And the reason I've grown and trained and developed such massive impact with the people that I'm serving, from uni students to coaches to teachers to, to kids in their schools, is because I've over-delivered, but I've embraced that vulnerability and I get results. But I learned what the result is might not be what they truly need. So I've learned the quickest path to success is to consistently over-deliver by doing something no one else is and to build that relationship. This is how I've become a deputy principal in just eight years. This is how I've become a university lecturer at two different universities so I can help people as much as I can. Alicia, one of my clients just recently, I helped her transition into a leadership position and she needed to establish rapport really quickly. So that's that connection with the team. And she was really quite nervous. This was her first leadership position. She didn't have any of the systems or the experience and she was starting to make this massive uh, transition in the position. Well, and just after a few months of working with her, built those relationships across the network, we gave her the systems and we built her confidence and skills up. So now she's running a highly energized and highly results driven team that is actually making huge impact with their clients. Because at the end of the day, they focused on quality relationships and rapport building, sustainable and engaging explicit courses, but really focused on the relationships first. Because I really just needed to understand what, are, what is she struggling with right now? And let's move her from A to B, simple steps, collaboratively develop the solutions together. Pretty much it. In other words, that is the power of personal brand, the ability to show up, to hold yourself to an, a level of integrity and to actually seek to understand other people first. It's entirely supported on the foundation that relationships, relationships, relationships. The trust you build with yourself by doing the hard stuff, but also the trust you build with others by putting the needs of theirs first as you listen and not going in with your alternative agenda. And I was just re recently listening to one of Alex Amosi's podcasts and he was saying that he used to get super angry when something wasn't going his way. When something wasn't right, it would just explode. And now he's shifted and he's changed. And he said, when something's not going my way, and I have to say reshoot all of these videos that I've just spent a day doing, he says to himself and to others, I will do what must be done. And it's that simple shift in language to I'll do what must be done. Because when change is assured, it becomes a must. I must do this thing. So if you're thinking, I can't make content, I can't connect with people, I can't build my personal brand and build a team and deliver to my students and all of the things that are associated with coaching, teaching and, and content creation or leadership in general, I'm just gonna encourage you to start rather than be perfect. Because I remember when I first started filming, I was just tripping over my words, I was struggling with everything that I was doing. But at the end of the day, no one's perfect. We're here to learn, we're here to make mistakes, but we're here to grow. So here's where you can use it today. The scene framework. We need to share by first seeking to understand before being understood. Build the communication and the interpersonal skills first. People ultimately wanna feel heard, valued and cared for. And that's the magic of rapport. So I've done this by first trying to seek what they understand, seek if I understand their problem, and then eventually you're building this thing called relational trust and then we can actually work together collaboratively to get to the solution. Number two, we need some experience. Earn and learn respect from experience. Demonstrate how you've dealt with it or overcome that challenge by solving the problem with a solution and just continue building your own capacity. Remember, that's 
basically the entire framework of lifelong learning. Learn, do, teach it. Number three, we need to experiment. The definition of madness is doing something continuously, repetitively, and expecting a different result. So research, test, iterate your solutions and apply them to stories, methods, strategies, whatever you're doing. But I've ultimately learned that there's a fear that is controlling our actions. And if that's the case, trust can't be built easily. And whatever we do will not work. Brene Brown again said, the greatest barrier to daring leadership is not fear. The greatest barrier is the armor that we put on and how we try to protect ourselves when we are in fear. And the last step, number four, we need to notice the results we're getting. We've built these relationships, we've built these systems, we're experimenting with what we do. We need to notice what is the result we are getting. Is it what we want? If not, evaluate it. You can use a pine analysis if you needed to, and then adjust your approach. So when it comes to growth as a person, whether that's online, in person, in yourself or with others, the best approach is to evaluate and iterate until you get the result that we're looking for. Notice the impact that you're actually having <laughs> in your own life and the life of others. I learned that the hard way because I was just in this fog for years. But once you figure out, I need a change now, the world's your oyster. So after all, beginning with the end in mind, worked to give me clarity in my purpose. Course hacking, worked to design and create courses that were sustainable, engaging, got results systematizing the process, reduce the workload to make teaching sustainable and a transferable skill. Mastering your mindset work to help me go from unfit gamer to educational leader and endurance athlete. The success cycle worked to build up momentum in all aspects of my life. Leveling up my ambition and staying curious worked so I never settle for less than I'm worth. Sharing by first seeking to understand before being understood worked to build authentic relationships build on a foundation of trust. Experience gave me the confidence to embrace my vulnerabilities and to overcome incredible challenges. And noticing the result worked, recognize the wins and to change my approach when something wasn't working. So who am I today? You've got a snapshot and you can see on the screen, 32 years old, I'm an educational leader, a deputy principal, a university lecturer. I'm an ultra marathon and marathon runner. I'm a through hiker, meaning I do crazy long hikes. I'm debt free, got six figures worth of investments. I'm content creator, a coach, a mentor, and so much more because my complete identity has shifted from broke, unfit gamer to who I am today. So can you see how knowing how to teach can give you the confidence and the skills to create the life that you want? Can you see that learning these three lessons can dramatically change your life and those of who you serve? In short, can you see why teaching, aka making real impact, is a skill worth having? Yes? Well, this skill might be the bridge between where you are and wherever you wanna be. It has definitely been for me. So great, now, here is what I know. Even if we had a full day together, instead of just this training, it's gonna be hard and nearly almost impossible to give you all that I can. You need more than that. No matter how good the presentation is, it isn't gonna change your life. While everything I've shared today is valuable, it's just the tip of the iceberg. And if you like what I've shared with you today, you will like what I've got for you next. So you see, before I gave this presentation and this training, I had two choices. The first option is to part ways and just hope that you on your own, go and figure it out. The second option, I could take a more active role and responsibility for your success and create a win-win situation. I chose the second option. So here's what you're gonna get. Everything that I know from the past decade about teaching, building relationships, and learning. So I'm excited to share my CREATE framework and the guidance that I can give to create real impact through education. So if you're a coach, if you're that teacher, or that person who's looking to make impact, this is for you. So before I get into what we can do, I want you to hear from Scott. Do you see anyone could just follow the same system if you just got access to a computer and, and just follow that in a coaching space as well? I think the key was when we came into, and I'm sure Matt would agree, is just the access we had to to you, the way you ran it and, and that coaching that you were giving us, you're able to step us through the things like those new processes step by step. Yeah, that, that'd, be, that'd be my answer to your question, I think, is having access to the coach itself, like the resources are great, but being able to reach out to you was what really made the difference. So my mission is to create real impact 
through education. Are you ready to create real impact through education? Yes? So do it now. Never leave a site after setting a goal without making some action towards achieving that step. So you just need to go and connect with me on Instagram, subscribe to me here on YouTube, send me a DM if you found this helpful. We can tee up a call, we can connect, we can share experience, share ideas, and we can grow together. Because at the end of the day, I'm here to serve you, I'm here to contribute, I'm here to benefit and actually make massive impact in our education with whatever platform that we're using. So if you're looking to start teaching, awesome. If you're looking to coach or you're looking to create content to, in an education space, fantastic. I can show you my systems and frameworks and we can guide along the way. So hit me up on Instagram, send me a message, keen to chat with you. And lastly, I just want to credit, show my immense gratitude to my role models and my mentors. You've heard about some of them today, but I've got so many more that I haven't actually talked about. But I just wanna thank you for pushing me to seek continuous improvement, better my life in every way I possibly can to show up every day, so thank you.